Welcome back, I am John P. Today we are going to be talking about the best investment watches for the year 2022. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and do the wristwatch check. I have the IWC Portuguese or chronograph with the green dial. I put it on this red strap. This is not uh, copying after a certain someone on the internet that puts red straps on their watches. Uh, this is actually, in fact, for the uh, the Christmas holiday and the holiday season here, which is when I'm shooting this video. Uh, by now, I'm probably already back in Florida. As you can see, I'm not uh, in Florida. I think the uh, the jacket gives that away. But nonetheless, I am going to be making this video for you um, with my Christmas watch, the IWC Portuguese or Chronograph green dial with the in-house movement. By the way, these have gone crazy in terms of desirability. I bought this watch from another watch dealer and just on the whim because of the green dial and I thought it would be fun for the holidays and then I didn't realize but I, I checked online and these are actually trading at sometimes over retail which I think is bonkers for an IWC chronograph in current production but that's a great segue because that takes us in to what's going on in the watch market today which is absolute desirability for two categories, this being unique and unique vintage, as well as high-end independence. And so for the year 2022, that is where my focus is going to be for investments with watches. Now, if you've been watching this channel, you know that I oftentimes, if not all of the time, have been not an advocate for investing in watches. I think there are better places to put your money, but so many of you have reached out to me on Instagram, The Real John P, as well as Delray Watch, delraywatch.com, where you can buy, sell, and trade watches, uh, talking about how you've decided to invest in watches anyway. So, for those of you that are stubborn and just want to invest in watches, I'm going to share with you my picks and where I would place the money to see the best returns if you really wanted to. Once again, not advocating this. Also, please do not forget to check out SinclairStraps.com for the best premium high-end leather watch straps. So the first brand, by the way, I just have my notes here. I'm outside. It's a lot going on. Uh, but the first brand that you need to focus on is FP Journ. Do yourself a favor. Have a little test. Go to Chrono24 Online Watch Marketplace or go to eBay or Watch Recon or any of the other places. Type in FP Journ and see what comes up. The only things under $70,000 for the most part Sometimes there's private sellers, but the only things is the basically the battery driven or the quartz driven FP Journ Elegant, which used to trade a couple years ago at $8,000, now upwards of 50 plus depending on the model. That's about it. You have a couple of the lower end sports, the Octa S line and some of the other Octa lines, the more approachables, but all the high end Journs, forget about it, totally gone. The thing is, and you'll see this as a trend in the in the watch brands that I'll be talking about in the watch models to focus on in terms of seeing a great return or holding the value is the scarcity. And FP Journ has the scarcity as well as that super high demand, right? Think FP Journ only makes eight to nine hundred pieces per year. And when so many more people than that want to buy every single last one of their watches, it it's no it's it's just easy to think how these watches can continue to climb in price and value and can be looked at as investment. So FP Journ is where I would focus and you can see a lot of the dealers are very, very willing to stock these at, at higher prices than ever before because a lot of us know that these are going to continue to climb in price and it's almost a name your price brand at this point and there are so many people that want them. So this is the number one brand that I would look out for is the FP Journ any of the models, doesn't even matter if it's a ladies model. By the way, we had a ladies model uh, in through the doors, one of the ladies elegant with the diamonds, and it sold almost immediately, uh, I believe. So it just goes to show you a watch that otherwise from any other manufacturer or brand would have taken years to sell. Ladies pieces are difficult to sell uh, in the pre-owned market. This sold immediately. Goes to show FP Journ 2022. Now next, we have another more scarce, but still a larger manufacturer than FP Journ. This is going to be a Langunzona at 5,000 pieces per year. Within the last few years, three to four years, a Langunzona has become a blue chip brand at this point. Previously, a Langunzona, you can get at a steep discount. Now, I'm not talking about all the pieces. I'm not talking talking the uh, the Richard Langs or any of the higher end tourbillons. You'd still have to uh, play ball a little bit. Um, if you know what I mean, to obtain some of these higher end pieces. But within the last few years, even the slimlines, little simple basic two-hander uh, dress watches or the three-hander, 
with these sub seconds, these, uh, you know, the Saxonias of the world, these Elangunzonas are now selling at retail or even a little bit higher, especially now in the holiday season. And this is something that truly blows me away because even though they only made five, they only make 5,000 pieces roughly per year, it's still Richemont. It's not an independent manufacturer. It's a very high-end manufacturer of watches using traditional methodologies from Germany. Great watches. I love them. Timeless and very classic and handsome designs. But at the end of the day, a Richemont brand, but the desirability far exceeds the production. And so like the others I'm talking about, that's what I look for, right? Think of, you know, when you invest in real estate, you want to find a hot market, a place where everyone wants to be. And, you know, as time goes on, people will pay more if they really want it and they have the means to do so. So a Langunzona, put it on your list. And next we have H. Moser. Now there are some people that, and I'm, I'll see it and, and hear it in the comments below. Feel free to chime in. Uh, there are some people that think H. Moser, you know, Federico, Federico Talks Watches and Delray Watch and H. Moser somehow were involved in some grand scheme to pump up the prices for H. Moser. I don't think we actually have any H. Moser in stock. And the reality is we rarely get them in stock. Occasionally we'll take a Pioneer or one of the more approachable uh, models from H. Moser in on stock. But there's certainly, you know, it's not that we have a large cache of H. Moser that we're trying to get rid of. But the reality is H. Moser, again, only creates about 1,100 to 1,200 pieces per year. I think they'll probably keep climbing as they expand their product lineup and get more into sporting watches like we saw throughout the past year with the Streamliner, more of that integrated style. But H. Moser, there are so many dealers and collectors that truly see the value in the H. Moser watches. Totally vertically integrated, high-end, independent watch manufacturer that can truly do anything they want to, and they have, and what they want to is please the savants and the collectors, and these are the guys or ladies that are paying the premiums for these watches, which make them investments. Go to your favorite online watch dealers and see what some of these Mosers are now trading at. I think, you know, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, when I made similar videos, um, so there are going to be some people that are going to be kicking themselves and said, I really wish that I picked up a Moser. But what do you guys think about H. Moser? Leave that in the comments below. Now, this next one, especially if you're a longtime avid watch collector, you're just not going to believe it. This is Urban Jurgensen. Yes, that's right. Many of you are probably even scratching your heads. Who or what is an Urban Jurgensen? Well, a Urban Jurgensen is another high-end independent manufacturer that has recently been acquired by another high-end independent manufacturer, which is the theme that uh, kind of investing or, or watch collecting um, returns is going in the direction. Um, high-end independent manufacturers or independent manufacturers uh, to kind of appeal to the collectors who pay the premiums. But Kerry Voodalainen picked up some investors and they purchased Urban Jurgensen. They're going to take them under the wing and manufacture of themselves. I mean, personally, I thought Kerry Voodalainen made a much higher and more sophisticated timepiece, but perhaps they'll make the Urban Jurgensen more of uh, their quote unquote approachable model line. Time will only tell, but surely the watch brand is going to go from being closeouted at 80% off the retail price uh, to other wholesalers and dealers to probably even selling above retail if they can really work on the branding, limit the production, stop the uh, the closeouts and the wholesaling, and really get into the right collector's hands. We had three of these Urban Jurgensen's recently at Delray Watch, even much before shooting this video, and they blew off the shelves. Truly, they were gone in no time at all. And the place that we got them had a few others and they sold before we could even acquire them at Delray Watch. So people are seeing that they were acquired and there's a lot of buzz and stir around this. And we see that with the speculation, especially with companies like Watchbox through uh, by partnership or through proxy have acquired Day Batoon. So we're seeing that and people want to get a piece of the action and they're having a lot of fun with it. So Urban Jurgensen, that would be on my radar as well. And lastly, I have to mention this, because this goes with the scarcity concept that drives the value. And there are gonna be some Rolex people out there that are really going to criticize this and saying, well, I've done so well with my ceramic Daytona that I purchased at retail four years ago. Uh, and look at the return. Yes, okay, understandable, but that's, you know, who could have had the foresight? There was really no evidence to support that because Rolex was producing more and more and more watches every day, over a million per year, and they want to produce even more of these watches. Uh, but when we get into the specific type of watch, 
There's some kind of bird, by the way. I am outside. Uh, but when we get into a specific type of Rolex watch, I would focus on vintage Rolex. Rolex is increasing in popularity. Vintage is increasing in popularity. And vintage Rolex is just not being produced any longer. So if you had to decide in terms of an investment watch, one of these categories, modern Rolex, is still being produced, whereas vintage is just not being produced any longer. And more people are getting into vintage every day and more watch collectors are being born. I mean, people are starting to develop the hobby every day. And so when I add watches to my collection, like when I added my 1016 Rolex Frogfoot dial to my collection, I had a choice between modern or vintage. I personally like vintage. The scarcity is there. More people want it every day. And if you get a vintage Rolex in great condition, that is going to be something that is coveted and it's a different type of thing, right? Because when you look at a modern Rolex, they're all the same, more being produced. But with vintage, it's a little more art world. It's a little bit more antiquity, antique, and there's just something about that. And so in terms of, once again, the scarcity, that would be the direction I would send you in for watches as investments in 2022. So I want to leave this video on, once again, a note where I started the video and say, I do not recommend out of anything out there, I'm not giving financial advice, I'm not telling you what to put your money into or to invest in, this is nothing like that. What this really is, is just where I think the most increase in terms of value are going to be, which is probably the most likely categories or the easiest categories to predict. There are gonna be other watches that I probably missed. Feel free to leave those in the comments below. But I think safe to say, everything I mentioned, you will at least not lose but I can't predict everything, and that's something we need to keep in mind for the one or two guys that are gonna be watching this 10 years into the future and leaving comments, well, John P. Uh, was incorrect 10 years ago. This part of the video is for you. What do you guys think? Leave that in the comments below. Please do not forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And check out DelrayWatch.com as well as SinclairStraps.com. Thanks, guys. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.